The world of tomorrow and the instruments of science which are shaping it may seem remote and fantastic, but yesterday's fantasies are becoming today's facts. How will these great advances influence and benefit our personal lives? Let's look into any ocean, lake, pond, or puddle. Here in this watery world, cool and calm as can be, lives this damp little drip floating peacefully. But when the heat's on, the sun comes out. The rays, they agitate him, make him jump about. Well, he gets all shook. Look out, stand back. He's going to blow his stack. The drip evaporates. And then, he's joined by his friends. They're together again. They float up high on the moist, warm air. We can't see them, but they're still there. They fly way up where the cold's intense, and back into droplets. They condense, and that's what makes a cloud. But when too many droplets crowd a cloud, that crowded cloud, he cries out loud. That's the way we get the rain. Well, look who's here, the little drip again. Our Earth is surrounded by an envelope of air. Radiant energy constantly pouring out from the sun heats the Earth and its atmosphere unevenly from pole to equator, setting in motion broad flowing rivers of air. Wherever opposing currents of air develop, giant eddies and whirlpools are formed. These are traveling areas of low pressure in the atmosphere. The clash of these opposing air streams causes clouds to form and usually brings stormy weather. Between the areas of low pressure, there are eddies rotating in the opposite direction. Here, air pressure is high. This usually brings clear skies and fair weather. By charting their positions each day, weathermen can estimate the course they will take and the weather that will result. Keeping track of the steady parade of storms and fair weather requires the constant preparation of new maps. This is a never-ending task. Weathermen must construct these maps from a continuous flow of data that pours in from weather stations all over the world. Let us project our present knowledge with a little imagination and speculate on how satellites might be used in future operations Prediction charts have indicated that a powerful hurricane will begin forming today in the Atlantic Ocean. The electronic weather map shows an intense storm system building up about a thousand miles due east of Miami, Florida. The controller calls for a close-up satellite view of the troubled area. Coco 526, Yankee 2.5. Okay, controller, Coco 526, Yankee 2.5. characteristic swirling clouds of the hurricane are beginning to form. At sea, the waves anticipate the violence to come. The controller calls for a last-minute prediction of the hurricane's path. If control measures are not begun at once, the hurricane will smash across densely populated areas within 48 hours. EST. A hurricane is forming 960 miles east of Miami, Florida. If control measures are ineffective, it will pass inland at Cape Hatteras in 48 hours. Control operations will begin within two hours, but safety precautions should be completed from Cape Fear, north no later than 6 p.m. tomorrow. At Weather Central, the control strategy is mapped out. A ridge of high pressure slants across the eastern United States between two low-pressure storm systems. If these two storm centers are intensified, the high will build up along the coast, forming a barrier that will turn the hurricane out to sea. Stand by. Now pulling in satellite number one for visual check of low-pressure systems L-20 and L-21. The operator brings the satellite into focus on the two storms, one centered over Kansas, 
the other over Labrador. Changing the northeastern low, L21. With the touch of a button, the battle begins. On the ground, chemical cloud seeders begin to work the two storm areas. All stations, Sector C. Activate Phase 2 Control Plan Delta. Set vapor rockets for 42,000 feet. Execute As an emergency measure, the controller calls for a salvo of vapor rockets to be fired ahead of the path the hurricane is predicted to take. These artificial clouds will block the sun from evaporating more water to feed the hurricane. The reports coming into the control center indicate that the diversionary cloud seeding over Kansas is now creating a flood danger. Specially equipped robot aircraft are dispatched immediately to release a high concentration of cloud seeding material into the fringes of the storm. Heavier seeding from the ground also helps to subdue the rain by spreading it over a wider area. After hours of tension, the turning point is reached. Latest reports indicate the control strategy is successful. At last, the high pressure ridge has settled along the coast, forming an invisible wall of safety. The storm is over. The danger has passed. The hurricane has been defeated, turned away from the land and left to spend itself harmlessly far out at sea. In the world of tomorrow, weather control will enrich and safeguard our daily lives. In the foreseeable future, we will conquer more than violent storms. We will turn the destructive elements of today into new sources of power, shaping the land on which we live. All mankind will benefit arid wastelands will be made green and fertile and vast frozen areas will become productive to this end man-made satellites will probe the secrets of the skies they will be our eyes in outer space <laughs>